Hey folks, everything new under the sun. Here is an event uh, that could bring the world to its knees very, very quickly. And I think this is one event that likely will occur either during uh, the tribulation, uh, the first half, uh, or the, maybe the wrath of God. Uh, I think God's going to use the sun to judge the earth. And, and this is going to be part of it, whether it's, uh, again, in the four, during the four horse from the apocalypse or otherwise. And it's the idea of um, a coronal mass ejection, a Carrington type event, which would um, which has in the past occurred and took out telegraph wires, and we're going to read about that, um, but could take out uh, all electronics, at least uh, uh, most of the electronics around the world. And you note that we require electronics to pay for goods and services, to do pretty much everything in the global economy right now and the local economy, truly. Uh, pretty much everything is digital. Uh, pretty much you can't even get cash without going to a bank and having that the numbers punched into a digital system, a computer. Uh, and so uh, cash is just not something that they physically write down anymore. It's all, ultimately, it's all electronic. And uh, and the recognition, of, they, they even count cash uh, through digital counting machines that put it into the computer. So what you're looking at is an image of um, uh, uh, the magnetosphere, the satellites in and out of um, that uh, shield, as BP Earthwatch calls it. And if a CME comes and, uh, and hits the Earth, uh, it can take out or significantly uh, uh, reduce or degrade uh, or disrupt satellite communications. And of course, satellite communications are big for internet with Elon Musk's um, um, Starlink. And uh, all other types of communications, uh, flying, uh, flight, aviation, all that is uh, by way of uh, GPS, uh, uh, global positioning system, uh, which are uh, satellites. So let's talk about um, uh, Carrington event. Uh, so I, I want to take a look at uh, one article here. And uh, this is interesting. This is uh, out of techevaluate.com. What to do before a G5 or greater geomagnetic storm. Very interesting. G5 level geomagnetic storm hits the Earth approximately four times every 11-year solar cycle. The most recent catastrophic G5 occurred, uh, uh, storm to occur was in 2012, which missed the Earth by just nine days, and that would be that would be devastating uh, to the Earth to the electronics. A G5 or greater geomagnetic storm is coming uh, to the is coming to Earth with worldwide devastation to our electronic devices, power grids like humanity has never seen before. According to NOAA, these storms have the ability to cause the world's power grid systems to completely collapse or blackout. Preparing yourself for um, uh, natural disasters like the G5 Carrington class level or uh, greater is imperative, it says. So the question you know, is, what is this Carrington event? And it goes on to this, describe the Carrington event of uh, 1959. Now, this is from nasaspaceflight.com, and it speaks about uh, this, this Carrington event, uh, which, which happened, and, and it could happen again. Uh, it says, um, when the CME arrived, this is speaking of the, what they called later the Carrington event, the coronal mass ejection arrived, the Kew Observatory's magnetometer recorded the event as a uh, magnetic crotchet in, uh, crotchet crochet in the ionosphere, this observation, coupled with the solar flare, allowed Carrington, to the person who discovered it, to correctly draw the link for this first time between geomagnetic storm uh, storms observed on Earth and the sun's activity. So this Carrington guy recognized that you know storms on the sun could affect uh, the Earth and the planet, and they're coming towards uh, uh, towards us. Upon impact, tele and this is the what happened uh, related to it. Upon impact, it says uh, telegraph systems across. Uh, Europe and North America, which took the brunt of the impact, failed. So the telegraph, basically, uh, you know, the telephone poles, the wires, that was the telegraph. Um, back in that day, they, they carried, um, you know, signal for that they could um, Morse code, uh, radio signals, so they could uh, type out messages. In some cases, telegraphs provided electric shocks to operators. In other cases, their lines sparked in populated areas and in places started fires. So you look at the, uh, the fires started by telephone poles in California uh, because of the, the heat and the dryness and the lack of up, uh, upkeep and maintenance of the power grid. 
and that's what happened because the, the the sun the cme came out supercharged and put a put a charge on these cables and it flowed down the cables and when it got to the end it had to go somewhere so it shorted out to earth or, or uh, started a fire spark somewhere and release its energy and uh, this is very much what uh, we uh, are likely to see uh, again it says the auroras were so strong they clearly uh, were clearly observed throughout the caribbean Mexico, Hawaii, southern Japan, southern China, and as far south as Colombia, near the equator, uh, in South America, and as far north as Queensland. It says the strength of the Carrington event is now recognized in heliophysics as a specific class of CME and is named after Richard Carrington. So now you know what the Carrington event is when people describe that uh, in relation to taking out the grid. Historical evidence uh, in form of carbon-14 trapped in preserved tree rings indicates that the previous similarly energetic CME event uh, to the one in 1959 occurred in uh, 774 uh, CE, common era, and that Carrington-class Earth uh, impact events occur on average once every several millennia. So uh, is this going to increase in the last days? I, I think it uh, will. It says, however, a Carrington-class superstorm did erupt from the sun uh, the 23rd of July, 2012. Narrowly missed the Earth by just nine days. It says, coming shortly after 2012, researchers from Lloyd's of London and Atmospheric and Environmental Research Agency in the United States estimated that a Carrington-class event impacting uh, Earth today would cause between $0.6 and $2.6 trillion in damages to the United States alone and would cause widespread if not global, electrical disruptions, blackouts, damages. Um, but that's that's not it. You think, okay, well, well, the grid goes down for, for a couple hours. Uh, it's far worse than that, folks. It really is. Cascading failures of electric grids, uh, electrical grids, especially in New England and the United States, also uh, are also particularly liked during a Carrington-class event. Power restoration estimates range anywhere from a week to being without power to a to the least affected areas to more than a year to the hardest hit regions basically to to fix all the fried wires and equipment uh, that this does basically like a lightning strike all over um, the the continent uh, basically that's what uh, that's what we're talking about here so you can't just uh, restart the the grid you need to go and fix repair replace uh, pretty much replace all this burnt uh, equipment and you know with the supply chain issues we don't have that hardware we don't have um, uh, the transformers and all that wire if it's all burned if all the casings burned off it from the extreme uh, amperage and, and heat of uh, a CME that would come through it um, this is this is the kicker here uh, you can't participate in the economy uh, if this happens electronic payment systems at grocery stores and gas stations would likely crash electric vehicle charging stations that rely on power the power grid would likely be unusable for some time, as would ATMs, which rely on internet and satellite link to verify account and cash disbursement information. So even if you have cash, the cash registers that the stores use, they won't be able to put it in there. They won't be able to type it in because those crash, the, A, they, there may not be electricity. B, those cash registers may be fried if a significant uh, uh, CME and electromagnetic pulse possibly from the same thing uh, occurred through that. Um, so this is a big deal. Uh, not only that, television signals from satellites would be majorly disrupted um, uh, and they would experience disruption to radio frequency communication. So even amateur radio would be uh, crippled for a short while until, until it passed. Uh, and maybe even the equipment uh, that you have, the radios, if they're connected to antennas, uh, they would be affected. Just like an EMP blast, the, the antennas would um, take in all the energy and basically force it through uh, your, your radio. So even, uh, you know, communications would be down uh, and commerce. You wouldn't be able to buy or sell at this point. Uh, and if that happens, you know what? They would have no choice but to go to a, uh, a cashless society to rebuild... Um, they're not going to uh, start making cash again. There's no way they're going to do that. They would have to rebuild from maybe computers on, on the edge of the CME that were not destroyed and move over to a cashless system uh, and, uh, and, get, and get that set up. So this is, this is something that I think is interesting. Again, they're never going to go back to cash. Um, it's too expensive. They can't wind up and, and put as much cash in there as is needed. 
uh, if something like this were to occur and everybody scrambled for cash, there's not enough cash. The only thing they could do is get some electronic systems up and uh, and and uh, uh, give out digital cash to people's bank accounts um, if there are any computer systems up. And I don't think it was going to be a worldwide um, completely take out every single piece of electronic sort of thing that's going to occur, uh, although maybe that happens in the last three and a half years when the wrath of God occurs. But um, I think what would happen is a smaller regional thing, which will give more excuse for governments to consolidate and to go even more digital in the name of, you know, saving us from the next issue uh, that, that comes up. They would not go back uh, to that. So it, it's a it's an interesting thing. And uh, what do you do? Uh, well, that's the question, isn't it? So I'll put this link in the description and you can you can check it out. But there's going to be a lot of stuff that's not going to work. Here's a list of them. ATMs, air conditioning, airplanes, appliances, banks, computers, dishwashers, uh, E911, a federal government's going to be down. GPS is gasoline. You won't be able to get gasoline. Pumps won't work. Hospital, medical devices, natural gas isn't going to be flowing. Uh, public health and safety, radio frequency, railways will be down. Refrigerators, shipping, snow plowing, television, toilets, um, trucking, um, all these things. At some point, we rely on pumps and, and computer chips and things to turn them on and off and to run them and, and to run on a scheduled basis and to support them. Uh, you know, Wi-Fi, obviously your internet's going to be out. Um, all these things. Wells that run in electricity, obviously. So if the grid is down um, and uh, electronics are down, you are in a heap of trouble. I hope you're prepared, folks. It's coming. I don't know when. I don't know to what extent, uh, but certainly uh, this is one of those obvious things to say, to, to see that, you know, this is going to be something that's going to occur in the last days. It completely fits in with everything. And I, I to me personally, I think it fits in with what the Lord would use, um, uh, and possibly only coming when the wrath of God comes, but maybe also part of the force and the apocalypse writing uh, during the first three and a half years of the tribulation, which I think maybe starts this fall. We'll see. Thanks for watching, folks. I'll leave it there. Be prepared. Um, and make sure you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. He died and rose again 2,000 years ago for my sin and your sin. He's coming soon. You need to get saved.